150 subscribers and 150 followers on Twitter. Whew! All I can say is thank you guys so much for this. Like, it took us quite a while to get to 100, but it, but it took us less time to get to 150, and I imagine it's going to take le even lesser time to get to 200 at this point. All I, I can, all I can really say is thank you guys so goddamn much for all your support, for liking the videos, for commenting on them, letting me know what, how, what you thought of them, um, sharing them around, you know, st stuff like that. I really appreciate what you guys are doing, and to celebrate this uh, milestone, I've decided for today's. Um, episode of Andrew Plays, I'd rather than play some obscure game that you, uh, that you've never heard of, most likely, we're gonna play a game that we pretty much all know about, and I thought, why not play possibly the most famous game ever created? Super Mario Brothers for the Nintendo Family Computer, or NES. And, as a matter of fact, this is gonna be a really long episode, because we're going through the entire game. Like, normally with these videos, they're about, I try to make them about 10 to 20 minutes long. This video could possibly last up to an hour, or however long it takes, depending on, well, what happens. And you probably already know how long it'll take, but during this recording, I don't know how long it's going to be until I finish. So, we're, we're in for a ride, and well, and well, uh, as a matter of fact, for this momentous occasion, not only are we playing a famous game... Super Mario Brothers, and we're going through the entire thing for like about half an hour or a full hour. I decided to use rather than using a regu my regular NES controller with the hooked into my computer with the USB connector. I thought I'd use a little bit something a little bit more powerful, you might say. That's right, the NES Advantage from 1987. We're busting this bad boy out for today's episode, so you guys are getting something special. And, as a matter of fact, before we begin, I actually want to shout out a lot of my friends and other people who have been very supportive to me and my videos. And I actually have my list right here. I'm going to I'm gonna shout a lot of you out, uh, out there on YouTube and on Twitter. So, special thanks to my best friend in the world, Cole Kowibi. Um... And also, shout out to my really good friends, Game Attacker, Aaron, Cliff, Senna S, Echi, Felix Ruiz, Spicy, Kitsune, Wacky Panic 64, Leaf Shadow, Somari8591, Jonathan, Leia, Vincent, King of Ju Ring of Jewels, Boy the Hedgehog, Jazzy Mixel7, Orikori, sorry if I mispronounced it, Blizz, um, Hallup DX, Eddie the Fox, Maximum Sky, Sleepy Otter 8806, Scribble, um, Scribble Bean 11, um, Mind Destroyed, Mr. Mummy the Hero, Techie the Fairy, Dekoma Olar, Kudo 108, um, Disc Jam, Donnie Kane, Goop Videos, Darino, Ian O'Keefe, SMK Fan 99, Cartoon Fam 18, Temo, Rini, Temo Rinky, Daniel T Gaming, Magalette, uh, Mag Magalani's mapping. Sorry again. Sorry if I mispronounced it. And Tom Servo three. So you guys are all awesome. I y'all are mighty fine. So, but enough babbling on like a jackass. Let's begin the playthrough. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm sure we all know Super Mario Brothers, famous game, came out almost 35 years ago and still celebrated by people all over the world, including myself. It was once the best-selling game of all time, before Wii Sports took over. Um, but it's still a fantastic game. It holds up. So honestly, it's amazing how well it still holds. Well, 
Shit. Anyway, uh, sorry about that. I did not intend that for that to happen, and I don't usually do that. I guess I got carried away. But, um, yeah, famous game. Surprisingly, but surprising how well it still holds up after all these years, to be perfectly honest. Like, really, to, to my honest opinion, there are really only few games that, uh, that can really, that really have the honor of being holding up so well after all these years, like Super Mario Brothers, like, like seriously, um, I love this game so much that sometimes whenever I'm just feeling bored or can't think of a game to play, I'll just throw this puppy in and just, uh, play it just for the hell of it and beat the whole thing. As a matter of fact, I've beaten this game a lot of times, actually. This was one of was like, I think I first beat this game back in either, uh, I think 2015. And well, it was really cool to do that. And well, like, at first, like, this game seemed, like, after I beat the game a couple times, it got kind of boring for me, and I just didn't bother playing it that much. But then I realized that, that I wasn't really, I was only playing about less than half of the game, because when I was beating it at first, I was using the warp zones. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with, with those. Like, I was using the warp zones to get to the end very quickly, and well, I realized that um, doing that, I was missing out on so much of the game, and I wasn't getting a complete experience, if you will. So, after, so I decided to finally try to beat the game without using any warp zones, and well, I did that, and it was actually very fun to do that, and that's honestly how I like to play the game nowadays. Get through the entire game without using any warps or anything to skip ahead. And I even I even got so good that I was even able to beat the game without using any continues. Like I I'd, I'd get a bunch of lives and I just beat the game without getting continues. I don't know if I'll be able to beat it without continues here today, but we'll uh we'll see how that goes down. You guys might get lucky with this one. But who knows? Alright, first castle, ominous atmosphere, well, not really, but just, just, just go along with it. And I died. Why am I not surprised? Alright, so. right. I guess it's all, I, I guess I, I guess I'm not in the best, uh, position, because I'm sitting crisscross on my bed, and, uh, like, I'm sitting on a, or, actually, no, I think, yeah, I think I'd be doing better if I was sitting in a chair, because I have a much firmer thing to, to rest my butt upon, to be honest, but since it's, well, soft, I, I guess I'm not really having the best time, but I'll, I'll work with it. Alright, world two. Get the get the uh fire flower and the uh, oh whoops. Oh. Uh, well that wasn't a good idea. Oh there oh yeah, there there isn't I don't think there's anything there. Kill everybody, get the, fa the flower. The thing that sucks, honestly, like, Super Mario Brothers is really awesome, but there are some things I have wrong with it. One of the things, probably the worst, like, one of the worst things about Super Mario Brothers is that it has a point system, but the points do not do anything. Like, the only reason to have points in a video game is if, like, it's an old arcade game, like Donkey Kong, where the idea is to get the best score, or if the points uh, allow you to get extra lives or something like that, like, in, a gun, uh, Gunsmoke for NES, like, in that game, you can actually use the points you get to, uh, buy items from strangers that you find along your journey, which is really cool in my honest opinion, but here in Super Mario Brothers, the points don't do anything, you don't get any extra lives from them, which really sucks, because it's like, it gives you more of an incentive to get all those points, but nah, it's just a number that looks really cool when you get it really high. But, I, like, 
the coins, I, like, of course the coins are what you use to get extra lives in this game, but honestly, if you're gonna have that, then why even have the score? Because with a game like Super Mario Brothers, you don't really care about how high a score you get, you care about how far you can get and make it to the end. It's not like with the older arcade games where there was no ending and you were just trying to get points. Um, so, yeah, but other, but really that's more of a minor complaint, but still it kind of sucks when you have points in a game, but the points don't really do anything, especially in a really hard game, like, uh, Mighty Bomb Jack for the Family Computer and NES. That game, that game is really hard, and it has a point system too, but the problem is, is that the points don't do anything. You can't, as far as I know, I, I might be wrong on this, but as far as I know, in Mighty Bomb Jack, you can't get any extra lives at all. And it sucks because there are no continues in the game. And if a game's not gonna have continues, you you might you, you should at least allow me to get some extra lives, but as far as I know, you can't do that. And well, this, the, the points won't help you either, so really, you're just left on your own. Honestly, a game like Mighty Bomb Jack would really benefit if you could, if it, if it was a lot more forgiving like that, because, but, like, the game on paper is actually pretty fun, like, being able to jump around and do all those weird things with the physics. Um, but the thing that sucks is that the game is way too hard, because, well, it doesn't give you any continues or extra lives. You just have to work with what you have, and if you get a game over, you're going back to the beginning. Thankfully, the arcade version, uh, versus Mighty Bomb Jack, which only came out in Japan, did have a continue feature, so at least we have that. So honestly, if you're gonna play Mighty Bomb Jack, play the arcade version, because it has unlimited continues, and... If you're playing it, you're most likely going to be emulating it, so you don't even have to worry about spending a lot of money. So, yeah, there's that. Yeah, and of course, another thing, two other things, at least from my memory, that I don't like about Super Mario Brothers. One, the springs. The springs in the game don't really work that well, and well, it took the Nintendo a while to perfect the spring physics. Like, I think... They got it, I don't know, they got it a lot better in Super Mario World on Super Nintendo. Um, I don't, no, there, I don't think there, no, there weren't any springs in Super Mario Brothers 2, uh, well, American Super Mario Brothers 2. Japanese one, of course there were. There, as a matter of fact, the Japanese Mario 2 actually added green springs that sprung you a lot higher and farther. Um, but in original Super Mario Brothers, um, you only get the red springs, but even then, like, the springs, it's like, they feel really broken, like, it's kind of hard to bounce Mario on them, in a way, I mean, it's possible, and I've been able to do it, but it's still, it's very finicky, and it doesn't feel that good, unlike the, all the other, like, it's ironic, because... Super Mario Brothers has to have some of the greatest physics in any video game ever. Yet, with the sp like, like with the jumping and the being able to control Mario, but like all of that is perfect. But the springs are the one thing that they screwed up on. Luckily, the springs aren't. They like, see there's a spring right, right over there. But I'm gonna skip it because I'm cool. Or just because I don't want to deal with it. But, yeah, it's like, luckily they don't show up that often in the game. Especially if you're playing with the warps. And, uh, I'm gonna get me some extra lives because I'm a dirty bastard. And I screwed up. Actually, I'm just gonna... Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Game over. Um, actually, you know what? I'm the. Oh, whatever. I'll I'll, I'll continue. I'll use continues. It's fine. We're not really playing for valor. We're just playing through to the end. I'm not like. Honestly, don't mind. Like, I thought I had extra lives. I was gonna just kill myself so I could do the whole thing over again and get the lives, but. I guess, I think I, I didn't have any left, so, yeah. I was kind of stuck there anyway, because you really need those extra lives, because Super Mario Brothers is, is, like, it's not too challenging, like, overall, but it does get very hard at the end of the game, especially around when you get to World 8, because 
starting in, I think, I think starting in World 8, or either, it's either World 7 or World 8, but starting in either of those two worlds, there are no more checkpoints, like, in any of the levels, like, like, none of, there are no checkpoints in the levels, you have to go through the entire level, all the way to the end, without getting killed, without any checkpoints to help you, so, yeah, you really need those extra lives, because you're gonna die a lot in World 8, like, for, even for me, like, even though I've beaten this game so many times, I still find World 8 to be a challenge. I, I have gotten better at it in recent years, but it's still, honestly, a problem. Or actually, going back to what I was talking about earlier, so things I didn't like about the game. So the points, the useless point system, and the springs. And uh, the third thing I don't like about Super Mario Brothers is the two-player system. Uh, Super Mario Brothers um, has a two-player system, pretty much like most other games of its day. So it makes sense to have it. Well, Super Mario Brothers is a fun game, so it makes sense to share it with a friend. And, well, the way they handled it in Super Mario Brothers, it, it really didn't work. Like, if you play, like, any Mario game starting with Super Mario Brothers 3, like, or any any game in uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 and anything after that in a Mario game, if you play a, the two-player mode, the way it works is that, um, you play the level, and, well, if you complete the level or if you die, um, and it's no longer your turn, and it goes over to your fr and to uh, the, the, sec the next player, and then they, they play through the level until they complete it or if they die. But, then that ma they make sense, like... But, um, in this game, in Super Mario Bros. 1, 1985 classic game for NES, or Famicom. Oh, uh, sorry about that. Um, the w in here, um, the way it works is that it's like, it doesn't matter whether you complete a level or not, it all matters if you die. Like, you, it's like, it really sucks, especially if you have, you're, like, you have, say, a really experienced player, and a, and a new player, like, the experienced player can, like, go through entire levels, and, like, make the other person wait for so long before they even get a chance to play, and if they, the other person really sucks, then they don't even have, get that much time to play, so, honestly, it really sucks as a two-player mode, because it's not fair to people new to the game. And it just, and even if you aren't that bad, if the other person is really good, you're gonna be waiting quite a while and it's gonna be boring, and that's honestly, it, we ain't got no time for waiting around here, so, 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 like, thankfully they fixed it with Super Mario Brothers 3, with Super Mario Brothers 3, um, allowing you to, uh, changing turns, um, whether you complete the level or when you die, that speeds up the pace of things and allows you to not have to wait around so much. And, and, and then of course there are, they eventually got to, to Mario games where there was cooperative mar multiplayer, like with, uh, New Super Mario Brothers Wii and Super Mario 3D World, both of which I have and I love so much. Um, and those modes are awesome, but the, uh, the turn, the, sw the turn switching in, uh, Mario games is also fun, uh, but not, but not in this. In this, the two-player system is horrible, it is vapid, it is dull, it is lazy, it is, it's bullshit, <laughs> to be honest. So here we are in the third castle. And we're jumping through these, across these pits with podobos, or podobos, or whatever they're called. And, uh, we, yeah, we make it, and it's, and we're cool, and we're doing great. Alright, world four. We're almost halfway done with the game. And I lost my firepower, which sucks. But we'll still get through it. Oh! Oh! You see that? I freaking jumped over those piranha plants. Like a... like a total whiz. 
wizard, not not wiz as in P. That would be disgusting. And we're good. Made it through 4-1. To, if, if you're wondering what I'm doing down here, I'm just checking my Twitter stuff, like my DMs and stuff. Like nobody, like right now as I'm filming this, nobody knows that I'm making this video. So I guess it's, I guess it's a little secret until they eventually see this. Or actually, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that trick. I wanted to do a cool trick, but then I decided against it. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Alright. Alright, here we go. Got through that crap. Got through this crap. And we got that. Jump. Fall, break the block, get all these coins, and there we go. And like, you, you see how like Mario is looks like it's he's sliding. That's not like a that's not like a problem. That's not a, in case anyone is wondering. That's not like a problem with the emulator, like low frame rate. That's actually a really cool glitch you can do. You see, the way it works is that when you're coming out of a pipe, and like, if you're if you're uh, either a big uh, Super Mario or a Fire Mario, if you're coming out of the pipe and you hold up A and B, um, Mario will jump out of the pipe, but when he lands, he'll be sliding on his foot for a few seconds, and it, and it looks really cool. You might be you might have seen me do it a bunch of times. Like it's like you have to be big. You can't be small. You have to be big. Either fire or not fire. And as you're coming up, hold that hold up B and A as you're coming out of the pipe. Mario will jump out and then he'll start sliding all over the place for a few. It, it only lasts for about five to ten seconds, but it looks really cool. And I do it pretty much every time Mario comes out of a pipe. So yeah. World 4-4. Now at this level, it's it's actually pretty tricky because they put in alternate paths, and you have to go through the uh, the correct path, uh, either top, middle, or bottom, in order to get through to the to, to Bowser or Koopa, I should say. I prefer the, I prefer calling him Koopa instead of Bowser, mostly because I think Koopa won't. Koopa is what he's called in Japan, but I also think that Koopa is a cooler name than Bowser. But Bowser's pretty nice, too. But I prefer Koopa, honestly. Alright, halfway through the game. This is only just the beginning, really. Fire. Starman. Star man, then and then the sky. He died and then the love it. Then he know me for my noven. Let the children lose it. Let the children lose it. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, <laughs> Star Man. I don't know the lyrics, but I do know the song because I hear it a lot whenever my brother listens to it. He loves David Bowie. I like David Bowie too, but my brother loves David Bowie even more than I do. And that's, that's a really good song, to be honest. But the thing is, I don't know the lyrics, so I'm just mumbling whenever I uh, sing it. Yeah, there's, there we go. Ah, uh, we have enough for an extra night. Yeah, honestly, it's like, it's tedious having to collect all the coins, and sometimes I just avoid them, but those coins, sometimes I forget that those, all those coins really add up. <sighs> it is kind of hard playing with a joystick, but I've managed before, and I'll manage right here. Five 
Crush 2. There's a spring and a hammer brother. And I didn't jump far enough and I I died by touching its feet. Imagine die imagine getting injured or killed by touching someone's feet. It'd actually be good if like you were like like if you had that power, like people trying to touch your feet. Cause it's weird whenever someone tries to touch your feet. Okay, that sounded weird, but I'm, I'm just thinking of things to talk about, honestly. Oh, holy crap, did you see that? That looked so cool, I thought I was gonna die. Oh, oh god. I hate it with the, the Hammer Brothers, they move back and forth, because it's, it's hard to get under the arc of their hammers, because if you get too close, they'll move up and touch you. And if you wait too long to try to avoid them, then they'll start coming right towards you, and you just have to either die or wing it. Or should I say wing it or get killed? I don't know. Ah, see there, that's another cool trick that I like to do. Basically, whenever you get a power-up, like a, a mushroom or a fire flower, if you land on top of it rather than getting it from the side or from, uh, or from the bottom, I mean from underneath, if you hold up and put, if you hold up and the A button while landing on top of a power-up, if you hold down that, Mario will jump out of the A, will, uh, Will Mario will automatically jump even if he's even if he's in the air, like Mario will just jump out of th jump from thin air. It's like kind of like a double jump, and it can really save your life, especially if you're falling down a pit. And it looks really cool, and I love doing it whenever I play play this game. So yeah, there's that. Oh shit! Fuck! 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 fuck. No! 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 Ooh! Ooh! Did you see that? Oh, dang it, I messed up. I was gonna do it again, but whatever. Coming down the- oh! But yeah, that was a- that was quite a ride. Uh, um, eh. Jump and jump. Oh! Oh shit! I died. I was trying. I I, I must have I must have forgot to hit the button. But that did look kind of cool. Also, it also looked kind of weird. It's like, a lot of people wonder why they reuse art assets and level designs in this game. The reason is, and this is actually a very interesting fact, possibly one of the most interesting facts about this game, at least in my opinion, um, Nintendo, Nintendo, when they were making this game, the game was so large for the time, like, before 1986, um, cartridges for Famicom and NES games, um, you could go only as high as 64 kilobytes, at least, I think that was how high you, that was as high as you could go for ROM capacity. So, Famicom games weren't really this big back in the day, like, as a matter of fact, Nintendo was planning on outright ditching Famicom cartridges in favor of the disk system, which they were actually developing while this game was being made. And this was actually meant to be Nintendo's last um, cartridge game for the Famicom, as they were planning on completely jumping ship to the disk system, seeing it as the future of the company and the Famicom itself. So this was meant to be Nintendo's uh, finale in terms of cartridge games, and they really went all out with it. And well, it's very and well, I gotta say they did a fine ass job. But like, with only with only 64 kilobytes as a four, as opposed to the 128 kilobytes of a Famicom disc card, um, Nintendo was running like like the developers were running out of space when they were making this game. Like nearing the end of development, they were running out of so much space that they had to reuse they had to reuse sprites 
and level designs just to have just to be able to fill all fill all 32 levels of the game. And um and because and because of all that because they were using because they were reaching the maximum capacity like that that's how they were able to pull it off with only 64k as a matter of fact um the goombas in the game are actually were actually created because of this and they were i think the last enemy to be designed was like like the, the developers needed another enemy to fill but they couldn't really but they didn't were didn't have enough space to create a new complicated enemy so they just made a simple one that had only two sprites of animation and could be killed very easily and thus they made the goomba and well thank god they made the I mean, thank goodness they made the goomba because well the goomba has become very iconic with the mario series and well there are a lot of people who adore the goombas and well the goombas are cool they're, they're cute little fellows and Honestly, I'm glad that they were created, to be honest. So, yeah. 6-2. Sorry, my... I'm very itchy and scratchy. Itchy and scratchy. You know, actually, I'm probably the only person who likes The Simpsons that doesn't like Richie and Scratchy. I, don't, I guess it's just not my type of thing. I just, I just find it really not funny, which is ironic because there are a lot, like there are a lot more violent things. Um, there are a lot more violent things and a lot more coarse things than Itchy and Scratchy that I like. Like South Park. I like South Park is even crazier than Itchy and Scratchy, but. I guess it's because, I guess I just find South Park funnier, like, with the jokes. Even though they do way worse things, like, with the toilet humor and all the joke and all the hum- and the jokes and the offensiveness. But, 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 but even with that, I still find the Itchy Scratch- Itchy Scratchy and Marge episode to be really good episode, because it deals with a- something- an issue I care very deeply about. Censorship. It deals with censorship and it shows the the true issues with it and the kind of the hypocrisy behind some people who believe in censorship. Like Marge is against having Itchy and Scratchy on TV because she is a violent show and she doesn't want doesn't think children should be seeing such a horrible thing. However, when the when the statue of David um and comes into Springfield, there are people who su her supporters come to tell her, hey Marge, they're they're having a statue of David and it has a nude man with his penis. We should go take it down. And Marge is like, wait, hold on. That's a work of art. Why should we be censoring that? And then like she gets interviewed on TV and like they make a really good point. Like like you you were so fine with censoring Scratchy and Scratchy, but not with uh, not with David. Like what's what the hell is what's your problem? And then they realize that like it's like, like uh, you know, censorship is bad and stuff or whatever. But, but yeah, it's a really good episode, and it's a season two episode. So, yeah. <laughs> and here, yeah, going back to before, here we, you, you, uh, here is another redesigned, I mean, reused level. Um, they reused the one one level design for. 6-4, but they added in a lot more fire, and starting with this level, Bowser throws hammers. But the ironic thing is, and what I've found, is that Bowser's, hammer throwing Bowser is a lot easier to get by and defeat than the Hammer Brothers. Which is ironic. I honestly find that ironic, because Bowser, well, or, or Bowser, Koopa, whatever, t tomato, tomato. Um, uh, Koopa is a lot bigger than the Hammer Brothers and a lot more dangerous and cannot be killed by getting jumped on the head, unlike the Hammer Brothers. But I guess the reason why, God damn it! I guess the reason why Bowser is easier to avoid than the Hammer Brothers because he doesn't move around as quickly and he don't doesn't jump as high and he, um, I mean he doesn't like his jump like his airtime is a lot. There was, he has a lot more airtime when he jumps than with the Hammer Brothers, so it's easier to run underneath him when he jumps than with the Hammer Brothers. And also, um, Hammer Brothers move a lot faster, so it's easier so, than Bowser, so it's easier to dodge them than to dodge him. 
Oh, shit. Like, I was trying to do the one-up trick here because I've seen some people try to... I've seen some people try to do the one-up trick on that staircase in this level, and they've got it to work, but every time I try doing it, I mis horribly fail, like a loony. But, yeah, it's like, I was trying to do it there, actually. Actually, I don't think I need to do that. And another thing with uh, the game is that with the one-up trick, you actually have to be very careful whenever you're doing it. Um, because, um, you see, since, um, the family computer, or NES, is an 8-bit console, it counts in, uh, 8-bit hexadecimals. It starts at 0, 0, and the highest possible thing it can go to is, um, FF, which is equivalent of 255, and the, w the way that the Famicom works is that it counts, whenever you count up to, uh, like, it, I, I can't really explain this very well, but basically, like, like, there's 256 different hexadecimals, since it's 8-bit, and, well, uh, the halfway point, or, or, like, the halfway point is 128, which means that, and, like, it can the way it counts is kind of weird for that, like, it resets down to zero, like, since 128 is the counting point, I mean, the halfway point between zero and 256, like, it counts, once it reaches the halfway point, it, like, starts equaling zero, which means that if you get, if you, like, like, if, like, you get 127 lives, if you get any more lives, it's gonna, like, reset to zero, and it really sucks, because, like, unless you're paying attention and counting the one-ups, you're not gonna know how many you have until it's too late, and then, like, if you get too many, then, like, and you get killed, you'll actually get a game over, even after getting all of those extra lives, so you have to be careful. Thankfully, in future versions of the game, they, not only did they make it easier to do the one-up trick, but they also, uh, removed the, they also were able to fix the thing with it, since it was on a better console, like, the Super Nintendo, the Super Famicom and Super Nintendo version in Super Mario Collection, aka Super Mario All-Stars, um, it just stops at 127, and well, it wouldn't have that problem since it's a 16-bit console rather than an 8-bit, so it can count higher. And the Game Boy Color version, Super Mario Brothers Deluxe, um, it omits the, um, it also stops at 127, so there's that, and well, yeah. So, yeah. Honestly, the best version of Super Mario Bros., in my opinion, is the Super Nintendo version. Even though the physics are slightly different, I don't, I don't understand, like, I guess, like, they felt like they needed a different physics engine. But even with the different physics in the SF SNES version, it's still way better. The graphics, the music, and, well, the fact that the lot, like, you can get extra lives, the two-player system works a lot better, at least I think it does, I can't remember. And the fact that it has both the continues and the save feature. And that actually goes for all of the, uh, all of the games in the, uh, that actually goes for all of the games in the, in the collection. Super Mario Bros. 2, 3, and... Japanese Mario 2, aka the Lost Levels. Not only that, but the Lost Levels definitely benefits from the, from the, uh, from all the fixings because J J Japanese SMB2 is so unfairly hard that it's even very cheap in some ways, and some things are intentionally designed to be super evil, kind of like with Ghosts and Goblins. Like, the placement of some hidden blocks and other things, and things meant to trick you into doing something you wouldn't want to do. And well, yeah, that, honestly, that game is kind of evil if you ask me. And yeah, like, my, like, my A button, like, it didn't, like, I held down, but it registered as just a single push, which really, I didn't mean to do that. Anyway, like, yes, like, Super Mario Bros. 2, like, Japanese, is, is, it's very evil in its design. 
and I'm, and I'm thankful that Howard Phillips real, uh, saw this and told Nintendo not to release it and instead release um, the American Mario 2, the reworked uh, Doki Doki Panic, because Doki Doki Panic is a much better game than Japanese Mario 2 in its design and in its variety. And I'm thankful we got the better game here in the States, although Japan did eventually get it later on as Super Mario USA, but that wasn't until 1992. But with Japanese Super Mario 2, it's very evil in its design, so I'm very thankful with the, that they did it, put it in the Super Mario Bro, Super Mario Collection slash Super Mario All-Stars, because, well, um, they added the save feature and the continues, and well, it's a lot more forgiving in, in what it does, and thus, well, it's a lot more pleasant, pleasant experience, to be, to be perfectly frank, so if you want to play Japanese Mario 2, I'd suggest skip the, skip the Famicom Disc System version and get the Super Nintendo version. For the love, for the, for the love of, for the love of crap, you're, you're, you're better off with the Super Nintendo SMB 2J than Famicom version. I sound like a total nut. Alright, 8-2. This is important. You gotta, you have to get that one up. If you don't get that one up every time, then you're gonna miss out, because they put that there for a reason. They know that, that you've gotten this far in the game, and you can't stand to lose any more lives, so you gotta get through it. You gotta get that. Yeah, that jump is actually pretty hard. Coin time! Uh-oh. Jump! 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 Jump, you little shit nugget! There we go! at the end, guys. Bear with me. Only two more levels to go. Well, actually, I wanna... Here's another cool thing I wanted to share with you. Super Mario Brothers, actually... Super Mario Brothers was how I learned what 8 times 4 is. Like, okay, so... It was, um... Sometime between 2011 and 2013. 2011, 2012... Somewhere around there. I was playing Super Mario Brothers, and well, I had done some research online, and I found out that there were 30, or actually no, um, that I found out that there were eight level, eight, eight worlds with four levels in each of the worlds in the game. Well, uh, this was before I was able to beat the game, but I knew that, even before I beat the game, I knew that there were only, uh, uh, uh eight worlds in the game. So, I was playing, and well, I thought to myself, um, if this is true, then how many levels are there in the game? So, well, I was playing, and then I decided I'd go ask my dad, since he was, he was in, he was near me. So, my dad was doing something, and well, I go up to him, and then I ask, hey dad, um, like, I was, so, there are eight worlds, and, well, I, I can't remember exactly what I told him, but th this is the best of my description. So I, I, so I asked him, Dad, there are eight worlds in Super Mario Brothers, and there are four levels in each world. How many levels are there in total in Super Mario Brothers? And then he tells me, 32. There are 32 levels, since there are eight worlds, four levels for each world, yet you multiply eight by four, and you get 32. And well... I'll never forget when he told me that, because that has stuck with me for the, for all of time, for all of time, or at least all time after that moment when he told me. 
And honestly, it's kind of weird thinking how I learned a simple multiplication factor from a, a video game, let alone Super Mario Brothers. But yeah, it's a pretty interesting tale that I thought I'd let you guys learn about. But yeah, that, that, that was a nice memory of the good old days before I went to middle school. Like, middle school was okay, but I didn't like it as much as elementary. I definitely like high school a lot better than middle school, honestly. Oh, shit. Damn it. Fuck. I'm trying to, I'm trying to kill this little shit corn. Because I want to get the, the, the mushroom. I can all just cheese it. No, I couldn't cheese it. <laughs> yeah. Stupid. I hate the Hammer Brothers. They're they're so damn cheap. They move too fast. You, it's hard to dodge them unless you get really damn lucky. And they they just overall suck and shoot. die and burn eternally in the base uh, the back the basement cellar. Well, actually, I don't have a basement. I used to have a basement in my previous house, but. We moved here in like 2015, and we don't have a basement or an upstairs. We have an attic, but nobody usually goes in the attic unless we're trying to get something, whether my dad's trying to do something up in the attic. Otherwise, nobody really uses the attic, which sucks. Oh, yeah, it's, it re I'm really upset that I didn't, that I didn't, that I no longer have a basement or an upstairs because I loved my basement and my upstairs. I had a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun with upstairs and basements, if that makes any sense to you. So, it, it's almost, it's, it's almost been five years since I moved here, so it's crazy thinking how I've been without those two things for so long. Not only that, but we used to have a lot more bathrooms, but now the, the, the place I live in, we only have two bathrooms. Or three if you want to count the backyard, but I haven't, I haven't, I haven't peed in my backyard in a while. Sorry, sorry if that sounded weird, but hey, what, what you gonna do? Sue me? You can't sue me. At least I don't, I don't think you can. Can, can. can you sue someone for telling some, telling people about how they like to pee in their backyard? Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> well, anyway, we're on the final world. It's actually going pretty well. Hopefully, I don't get killed. Final level of the game. Level world dash eight. I mean, world level uh, world eight level four. Eight dash four. Yeah. And then there's this part, the final stretch. There's a freaking hammer brother right there. It gets me pretty much every time. And uh, oh, well, that was simple. And. Uh, We're done! We're done! We've saved the princess! And the day is saved once again. So, uh... Well, that was Super Mario Brothers for you guys, and... I had fun! That was fun! And I'm really glad that I got to play it again, especially for you guys, to celebrate me having 150 YouTube subscribers and 150 Twitter followers, so... Once again, Thank you so much for all of all of your support, all of your enjoyment, all of your feedback, mostly positive feedback, and I hope that we have a lot more fun in the future, especially during these hard times, and hopefully I'll, within due time we'll make it to 200 subscribers. And well, yeah, so thank you to all of you guys on YouTube. Twitter. Y'all are mighty fine. And as always, this is Andrew Ambrose. And I'll catch you later. <laughs>